suffered from schizophrenia. Love Talk Radio. I did not recognize that I had schizophrenia uh, until I was about late 39 or 40 years of age, and I'm now 63 years of age. Did not even know it. Found revelation from the Holy Spirit that my mother was schizophrenia, that my aunt was schizophrenic, and began to see the patterns of this thing in my family background. These demons are the same, but they change in season. As I said earlier, with my uh, commercial that I had earlier, that in 65, when they blew up the black church in 63 over civil rights, they killed the children to stop the black people from registering to vote. Those are the same demons that we have now with Trump. Schizophrenic demons ain't no different when they was in Adolf Hitler than Mark Robinson. Mark Robinson is schizophrenia. Double tongue. Hitler was double tongue. Robinson, an African American so called Christian, said that he is a black Nazi. Now, the Bible gives us scriptures concerning these types of personalities. You have to understand that demons dwell in human personalities. Sometimes that you may not have asked to be schizophrenia, you may not have even known anything about schizophrenia except for the, really the revelation of the Holy Spirit, because in seminar school, I'll call them seminaries, uh, theological, uh, theological seminaries, they don't teach this uh, in their studies. It's not a part of their curriculum. And I suffered from being schizophrenia. I suffered from having been a double-minded person. How this forms in a person? Well, schizophrenia can also come through inheritance of sin. It can come through curses. And it can come through the sins that your mother and father or your great-great-mother, mother and father's father and father, that you don't know that you can inherit. The Bible says, our fathers have sinned and we bore their iniquity. Lamentations chapter 5, verse 7. In Proverbs 26, 2, the word of God says a curse should not come without a cause. You have to have a cause to bring a curse. Schizophrenia is a curse. The Lord has made us whole according to the spiritual side of his death and resurrection. When Jesus died at Golgotha, he stripped Satan from his authority. That's for any of us now who are suffering from schizophrenia. We don't have to. He's Jesus has paid the price. All principalities are under him. Every knee must bow. Every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And you need to confess and force these demons to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and to get them out of your life if you have schizophrenia. Now, let me say this. I'm not a doctor. As I was a chaplain, I never told somebody to get off their medication. Luke was a physician in the Bible. Take your medicine. But listen to me spiritually. You have to grow into this. You can save yourself a lot of money because the psychiatrist cannot help a demon or get a demon out of you. This has to be revealed to you by the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul says, I neither received it by man, neither was I taught it by man, but by the revelation of Jesus. I am 63 years of age. Know anything about being schizophrenia until I got into this ministry. And Sister Durden said, you use schizophrenia. And a lot of people don't know what schizophrenia is. All right, let's look at some scriptures because we're going to go through a series from Adam A. Hammond. It's called Pigs in the Parlor. I suggest that if you can go on Amazon or any Christian uh, bookstore, if it's a Baptist bookstore or Episcopalian, they're not going to put deliverance ministers on their shelf. For some reason, that's another gospel. That's another Jesus. I have to explain that later in my teaching. But please get this book. It's called Pigs in the Parlor. It's a practical guide to deliverance, and it gave me a serious understanding about some things in my life that I never knew, plus reading the Word of God. Excuse me. You can get these books, but you need to depend on the Bible. Now, the books can break things down in a basic manner for the natural for you to understand. But if you really want to get free from schizophrenia, let the Lord give you the revelation because when he gave it to me, it really woke me up. I did not know that I was like this, cutting people off in conversations, switching thoughts instantly, mood swings, indecisiveness, 
fear of rejection, I grew up with these tendencies, and I didn't even know. The first thing that we can see uh, concerning this issue is in the book of James, chapter 1, verse 8. And it says, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Now, you really need to hear me because when God called me into this ministry, he began to show me that my ministry would not be effective being double-minded. That's why he revealed it to me. Now, how did I get this a revelation? I'm going to humble myself and tell you. When I first got saved, after I got off crack cocaine, see, the double minders, the rejection, the, the, the demon, the PTSD, all, all these spirits entered into me. And I did not really know who I was due to the fact that spirits came to me through my mother and father because my mother had these same spirits. You can be a Christian uh, one day serving the Lord very well in a church on a Saturday or on a Sunday and come out there church and commit fornication uh, the next tomorrow like it wasn't nothing and go right back and then get convicted. And then now God's trying to show you you got a problem. Some people who have schizophrenia or who are double-minded don't realize that their behaviors are making them operate the way that they're operating. This is why I tell Christians it is very critical to you to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Excuse me. I did not say be sensitive to your pastor. Respect people who are in office. But just because they're in office does not mean that they're anointed. So you're going to have to do some research. You're going to have to study the Bible. You're going to have to get on your knees and really press, Lord, who am I? Because Christ says in Colossians 3.3 3, that your life is hidden in him. Now, my spiritual life and my natural life is two different things. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 2.14 that the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit. And this is why I was missing. How can I be schizophrenia when I'm at Fellowship of Faith Church cleaning, you know, the janitor and, and uh, uh, paying my trumpet? And here I am, Roman Catholic. And I get saved, I'm okay. No, I'm not. Religious schizophrenia, spiritual schizophrenia, schizophrenia that have been inherited due to sins of the Father are, are different types, but are they the same thing? Let me give you an example of the schizophrenia of religious, be it religious schizophrenia. Uh, Roman Catholic, Father Clepit, and uh, I wanted to be a priest because I was born Catholic, and I saw the priest. I was a little altar boy uh, back in Mobile, St. Francis Church, St. Stephen's Road in Mobile, Alabama, Father Clepid. And as an altar boy, you hold the thing, and he do the thing, and you sit there with him, and, uh, and you let him drink the blood of Christ, represent the wine, which is some straight wine to get you, and that's how I became an alcoholic, starting with that. And now I'm seeing this man serve God, and now we have bingo. I see the same man serving God, uh, hollering and smoking cigarettes, laughing at women, looking at the nuns, patting people on their backside, women. That's religious schizophrenia. I encountered that as a Catholic. I saw two personalities in a man that represent God. That's religious schizophrenia. I saw two personalities in Father Clepin. He did excellent services, and I always went to church <laughs> on Saturdays. St. Francis had Saturday service and Sunday service. And I, I'm not mad at the Catholic Church. My Christianity started from there because my mother was Catholic. Prior to her being Catholic, she was a Methodist. And I don't know what caused her to become a Methodist. She gave me a testimony of her and in the two burglosis center in Mobile, Alabama, and how the nuns was there for her, and the nuns gave her assistance. Well, the Roman Catholic Church is a form of Christianity, but in Christianity, some of them are contrary. Contrary, excuse me, brothers, I'm very tired, but I'm just going to teach this. It's, it's contrary to the Word of God. You praying to Jesus. Now you're going to pray to a woman that Jesus called woman and never called her God. 
Hail Mary, full of grace. The Lord is with thee. Blessed the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sins now, thou death. Amen. You have just prayed to a demonic spirit. Now, spiritual, religious schizophrenia has become dem- demons. They have become now doctrines of demons of your life. I was Roman Catholic, so I know what I'm talking about. So if you're a Catholic, this could be hitting you very hard. If you're non-Catholic, you're learning something, but it may not mean as much for you because you never experienced these things that I am saying to you. When a minister is called by God, I really believe that his past and things that he went through should glorify God through his mistakes. God should get the glory to see how God loved this man and carried him through this to bring him to a point of understanding some things to get free. And he did that to me as a 63-year-old man. I was like, this is a Catholic priest on Saturday, boy, and it's time for bingo. And I, the man that I looked up to wasn't the man that I saw. I began to see an alcoholic, one smoking vice for our cigarettes. Hey, Bernice, and my mama, and they say, Father Clifford, good evening, good evening. And then when the alcohol started being increased, and Father Clifford no more was just clipping. So that's that's religious schizophrenia. You know, uh, religion is not Christianity. Pure religion is undefiled, the Bible says, is to look after the widow and to keep herself unspotted from the world. So that form of uh, schizophrenia I receive. Now, the other schizophrenia I received was rejection. Rejection entered into me during my childhood. Rejection can enter into a person if a mother who are conceiving them has never confessed to you or to the father if you are an unplanned child. Now, I'm not trying to bring gloom and doom. I'm trying to just show you out of reality how schizophrenia can really enter into people. Brothers and sisters, you need to listen to me. And you, I, I, you, know, you, you people may not be... Uh, agree to depend on my political views, which is fine. I just don't want Trump and all of the spiritually. Y'all need to, need to tell somebody to come check this out tomorrow because I'm going to do this right because it's destroying marriages. It stops the person's progress as a Christian to be successful in the things of God. Let me say this again. Schizophrenia stops the progress of any human being who's trying to please God. Pleasing God is in First Thessalonians 4.11. But if you are double-minded, you cannot please God being double-minded. The Bible tells us in First Thessalonians 5.23 that we have a body, we have a mind, we have a soul, and that we have a spirit. Again, we have a body, We have a mind, we have a soul, and we have a spirit. One mind, one soul, one spirit. So what Satan does is to split the soul, to make it a twofold person. What he does through your rejection, through your religious schizophrenia or your inheritance schizophrenia or your common form of schizophrenia through rejection, it's a whirlwind of spirits that operate within this. I said, Sister Durden, are you sure I got schizophrenia? And the Lord said, yeah, you don't pay attention. You cut people off when you stalk. And, and he started beginning to show me that. I began to study to see my personality. And it came to me because I had always admired the German army. Now, I'm a Christian. My father was in the United States Army. I'm from Mobile, Alabama. Always wanted to be in the Navy. The USS Alabama was a big old beautiful battleship in my hometown on Broad Street. And I crossed over. I saw that big old ship. I said, dog, man, that's the Navy. And I wanted to be in the Navy. Now, from being in the Navy, I began to pick up certain things that I liked about certain militaries because I began to study. How can I be a born-again Christian and have accepted Jesus 
and confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth and believe in thy heart that Jesus is Lord, thou shalt be saved. Romans 10, 9. And then like Nazis. And the Lord began to show me it's not the Nazis you like, it's the uniforms you like. It's the military firepower you like because your father used to let you shoot 38s. Your father used to let you shoot uh, the guns. Wait one minute. I, I have to. Let me. I, I got a puppy. <laughs> I'm babysitting. Let me just put the puppy up. I'm really getting into it, but I'm, I'm trying to. I love this little puppy, but I, I got to put him away because I don't want the devil to use this to stop me. From, let me let me get this puppy and, and put him in and put, put him right back there and shut the door and we'll get started. Just just hang on, brothers. I'm so sorry. Wait one minute. Praise God. That wasn't that bad. That wasn't that bad. Amen. All right. We back. So I read these books about the German army. General Rommel, German army, Blitzkrieg. And my father was in the military and my brother was in the army. And I've always admired military history. I, I, I still study it, but I don't, I don't get into the point where uh, it has affected my personality. But the Lord began to show me that my schizophrenia was because you served me. But the army you love persecuted my people. Oh, that hit me. I said, Lord, I ain't never persecuted you. The people who you admire, the German army you might have admired, Auschwitz, Buchenstroff, they killed my people. Never saw it like that. I never saw it like that in my life. I looked at it as admiring the German army, the Blitzkrieg, jumping out of planes, the first and paratroopers, to the beginners of the first assault rifles. I, I looked at it like that. But the spiritual side is when God showed me that's schizophrenia. This is why I went up against Mr. Mark Robinson, uh, this big fat black man who called himself a Christian. And then he says he's a Nazi. That's that's schizophrenia when you do that. And I said, Lord, I repent. I love the German people. I have German people are friends of mine. I don't hate them. I admire the weaponry. But the Lord says it was still German. And that really wrestled with me for a while. I had to start fasting. God hit that with me. Okay, and I say I'm a Christian, and that I believe that Jesus, the Son of God, I confess him in my mouth, but I admire Blitzkrieg, I admire the SS stormtroopers who persecuted Christians, that's double-minded. Not that I hate the Jews, because I love the Jewish people. I love the Jewish people. And the Lord said, the reason why I'm revealing this to you because you love me. I see your Jewish flag. That that really touched me. And and when the Lord shows us revelations of our problems, he do it in so much love that no wife, no mother, no father can compare that love. The goodness of God bringing a man to repentance. I got on my knees. And I used to talk to Sister Durden about the German army. I'm fascinated. I said, Sister Durden, and she, she's a deliverance minister. She's my best friend, and she speaks German. That really got me. But she wasn't in the German, the German army that I was into. And I admired the German army. And they were a very, very powerful army. They had an evil person. And when God revealed that to me, I said, Father, I'm double-minded. That is when I found out that I was double-minded. It hit me. Only the Lord can give you revelation, uh, brothers and sisters, of being double-minded and schizophrenia. I will tell you that you can have deliverance and you can go through deliverance with a, a minister, but when I tell people how to get deliverance and how to get it done, I have learned how to share my experiences Hopefully that it can bring light 
to a person's problems that they didn't know. I had every German video that there was. When I was a gangster, I bought a German loop. I paid $32,000 for it. I was a gangster. I had a $16,000 AK-47. And the AK-47 is a former version of the first assault rifle from the Germans. And as God began to show this to me, I said, oh, wait a minute. I'm confessing Jesus, but yet I'm admiring a nation who tried to wipe out the Jewish people through their army. So God began to show that to me. So then he showed me the religious schizophrenia of being Catholic. And then he showed me the cultural schizophrenia with him with loving the German army. I said, okay. Then he began me to show me the identity schizophrenia. And identity. Demons have a name. What is thy name? Thy name is legions, for we are many. Now, I'm opening up my heart to you. This is just an introduction to this thing because we ain't got into the other deep stuff to free you. But I'm trying to show you how God freed me. Okay? He freed me from religious schizophrenia. I'm seeing the Roman Catholic priest honoring God, and then I'm seeing him acting as a carnal man. Then I see myself loving Christians and having an admiration and a love for soldiers who uh, persecuted the Jewish people because I love their weaponry and their loyalty and that gall, that death skull. That was I'm, I was a soldier. I grew up out of a military family. That's all I knew. And God took me out of that. God took me out of that. And then the schizophrenia that came through being rejected opened up doors to drugs to me, to personalities, escaping from sin, violence to my father, I mean my father to my mother, sin, fussing from my father to my mother, being confused in even religion now because I have a mother who's sending me and carrying me to a man's house named Fred Zimmerman, a bar friend, because my father uh, hit my mama and uh, beat her, and he got saved, talking bad about my family, because if my brothers and sisters hear this, they're going to think that I'm trying to degrade them. No, I'm just enough Christ, because I'm trying to show you how God showed me how I got schizophrenia, and I hope this can touch some light in your life. So I see my mama go to church and carry me to church with the Catholics. And my poor po daddy didn't really know anything about the Bible, so he gets colonized as a Catholic. Now, he didn't do this as a thing. <laughs> and then I see where the control spirit through Jezebel came uh, in my family. Uh, it wasn't a Jezebel that would degrade my, my father. It was a Jezebel spirit to implement spirits within schizophrenia. The spit personality of my mother laughing, going to church, drinking beer, smoking cigarettes, switching personalities. That was a norm to me. Now, my father and my mother having a problem, and then my mother tells me, I'm going to find the blackest man I can and show you something. And I said, he carry me to this man's house, Mr. Fred. And I begin to like him more than my own uh, father. Now, the Bible said, honor your mother and father. It's your days shall be run long. It's in the Bible. And I had a bitterness toward my father because I didn't like him hitting my mama. That opened up rejection and hate to my father. So I'm going to do whatever it's going to take me to love my mama. Go wherever my mama go, I'm going to. And now I have another man in my life, Mr. Fred Zimmerman, a Mobile police officer, and had enough nerves, but my mama said, I'm going to put both of y'all together. You know, I was scared as a young man seeing this big black man, six feet 11, and my dad is six feet 11, Indian. They sitting down at the table, and I'm sitting there, 
and thinking about my mama going to die. Criminal schizophrenia. When you're doing things illegally against God, the stuff is real. And as I begin to see my mother's personality change with one man and back with my father, and then vice versa, when my father carries me in the car, go get my hair cut, and I got to sit outside while he, he at Miss Wendy's house, which wasn't his wife. That's messed up. But I'm saying this because this is how schizophrenia operates in people. It sets you up through emotional disparities that without the word of God to develop a personality that will bring you unstable against God. Now, everything I said affected me being a Christian because I became double-minded through these things. Therefore, God revealed to me that I needed to get free from schizophrenia. James 1.8, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways, unstable in all his ways, unstable in everything he do. This is how dangerous being schizophrenia is to a person, whether you a woman or a man. It doesn't matter what color. Demons don't care about color. I was unstable throughout my whole life. Some of you, and my, including myself, have lost marriages because schizophrenia was the enemy behind breaking up many of my marriage. I was married, married more than once. See the schizophrenia background? So I'm laying my life down to you to bless you because God blessed me. I'm not schizophrenia like that no more. I can see it. Some of you can't see it. Some of you can talk about the Lord on a Monday and forget him next Friday. And then you'll pick the Bible back up. Lord, I love you. That's not consistent because you are unstable. Anytime that you are unstable in all your ways, it didn't say some. That's very dangerous. You see, thank you, Lord. The Lord says, keep being simple to them, son. See, y'all getting blessed because he's telling me they hear me. Unstable. Unstable. Not consistent. And when it says a double-minded man, that includes women, too, because women come from a man. So when you women hear Jesus say, man, woman, father, he ain't leaving you out because you come from a man. There are women that has inherited this spirit of schizophrenia. You got people who have doctor's degrees, lawyers that schizophrenia and don't even know that they are. I'm so grateful God gave me this revelation. It took me seven years. It took me Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday to fast before the Lord. These only come out by that of fasting and prayer. It took that patience for God loved. Show you, show that to me as I gave you my whole background as a child and how this thing had approached to me. Then it brought instability with me as a Christian. Remember in James 1 8, a double minded man is unstable in all his ways. Then God showed me Fellowship of Faith Church International. My pastor got me in the car. I love him to this day, Pastor Wayne Thompson. He, he's gone. I did. Went with the Lord. I loved him. He said, I'm from the street. I know you double-minded. I know you started cocaine before you played trumpet in church. Pastor, no, I, th- I thought I was a gangster. And I mean, I, I can hide this from him, not from a man of God. He said, you're double-minded. Get it out of here. And Pastor Wayne Thompson would carry me. And places where cars are wrecked and tore. He said, that could be you. That could be you. He said, you can't fool me. I was in the street just like you. He was a real estate agent. But he was out there, too. He was ex-Marine. 
He said, you're double-minded. I've been to it. I see it when you come on stage. You go in the bathroom. I was nervous playing trumpet. Now, I played trumpet in the world. But in the church, I was nervous. Why? The devil didn't want me to have that aggression that I had when I played trumpet in Mobile, Alabama. I was a wonderful trumpet player. As a matter of fact, between ages 18, no, 19 and 20, 18, 19 and 20, I played with, in Mobile, Alabama, BT Express, Casey and the Sunshine uh, Band, Piranha. Uh, I played with another group, Casey and the Sunshine Band, Shylights, and Men of Distinction in Mobile, Alabama. And I began to become a musician to get away from mother and father, hollering, arguing, and fighting. Now I got to go to this man's house with my mama. Now I got to go to this woman's house with my daddy. Yeah, low drugs. See how the devil is? Being double minded, being unstable. The goodness of God bringing a man to repentance. I'm telling you, my life of double minded schizophrenia always been on air. I've been on air 15 years. Am I a perfect man? No. Do I believe in you giving me autographs? No. Do I believe in you calling me an apostle? Not really. Brother Emmett is fine. I'm just trying to get to heaven. I have died from pride. I'm not into the church game where I must find your Bible. I'm not with that. I'm so grateful God gave me revelation of being double minded and schizophrenia. And then when the drugs hit you, now it opens up the criminal part of the Christian. Don't forget, you got a body, mind, soul, spirit. Criminal schizophrenia. Here's a young woman who has never had a father in her life. All she saw was her mother do drugs, her daddy do drugs. All she saw was she going to the room and another man come into the room, okay, with her mama and she in there in another room. Now she's 17, she's 18, another man coming in there, touching on her, molesting on her because of her mama's schizophrenia. And she sees this double standard because she don't know the Bible. Her mama don't know the Bible. And now she's schizophrenia with the spirits, thinking that it's okay. If I can see my mama do it, I told myself that I can do it. So throughout my life, when I got first married, I committed adultery on my wife. But because I knew Christ was in me, I did go tell her, honey, I committed adultery and I got divorced. That was the Christ in me. But the schizophrenia came in me by being seeing my mother do it, seeing my father do it. And I'm saying, it's acceptable. That's your mom and your daddy. You see how the devil uh, 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 trick you? And when I got in that car with Pastor Wayne C. Thompson, he said, you, you, I know what you're doing in the bathroom. Cast it out. Pastor Wayne drove me. I prayed. I was schizophrenia so bad that I was using crack cocaine. I was smoking, just smoking. I saw so much violence as a young man. The priests uh, drinking and fumbling with uh, women and seeing other priests uh, as I'm doing commun- uh, doing confession, confessing my sin. They were bad. Excuse me. Get the children out of here because I got to say something. Get any child out of this place right now. Get any child out. Get them out. This is not for children. I'm confessing my sexual sins because when I was in high school, I had a a fascist affair with my 12th grade high school teacher. It was real dark, and I liked the dark women. So how did the devil get me to get schizophrenia with that? I didn't see anything light skinned that was good, but Star Trek, Lieutenant Harua, Star Trek, I saw that, and I was trying to match my life on every woman that looked like her, because that's all I knew. I wouldn't talk the Word of God. See, that's how schizophrenia gets into you. the absence of God's Word, the mother and father ignorance of God's Word, and you suffering from their sins. Now, if this is effective, you, you can change that tonight. By confessing, starting your life back over, 
Get yourself really free from schizophrenia and take this ride with the Holy Ghost. Not with me. I said the Holy Ghost. Because we are going to get into it. I haven't even started. I just did one scripture, and it took me 42 minutes to do one scripture. And the Lord told me, if it takes that long, do it. I used to try to rush scripture to hurry up to get the next sermon. I'm, I'm, I'm more mature in the ministry. I want to get this message out. Double-minded. Okay? The Bible also says about double-minded. And he gives qualifications to get deliverance from being double-minded. Listen to this, my brothers and sisters. In the book of James, chapter 4, 7, verse 8, it gives us qualifications to get free from the sin. One, James, chapter 4, verse 7, and verse 8. Submit yourself. Therefore, to God. It didn't say anything about submitting yourself to Donald Trump. Submitting yourself to Barack Obama or Camilla Harris, T.T. Jakes. Submit yourself to Emmett Overton. No, it didn't say that. It says, submit yourself to God. Now, if you really want to get schiz- get free from schizophrenia, The first thing that you have to do is submit yourself to God. And we're going to allow you to do that tonight through prayer. We're going to allow the Holy Spirit to take presence and to forgive you. The Bible says that the goodness of God bringeth a man to repentance. Okay? Submit yourself to God. That's the first thing you've got to do. Now, and double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Now, when the Bible says that, he's not talking about unbelievers. Do you know the Bible's written for Christians? So unstableness, double-minded, that's for Christians. Ain't nothing in the Bible for an unbeliever but to confess Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Romans 10, 9, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth and believe in thy heart that Jesus is Lord, thou shalt be saved. I'm talking to you about experience. And as Pastor Wayne told me, when I know you go in that bathroom, you snorting cocaine. I felt so bad, I cried. My pastor did not throw me out the car. He hugged me. Never had a man to hug me. Now, I got close to him because he was military. He was a Marine. My father was a ranger. And he began to see that I was looking up to him, and he pushed me away from him. He says, "Uh uh-uh. And as I began to learn, he saw, he saw, I saw it not looking at him no more. I looked to Christ. He always told me, send people to me. Pastor Wayne said, always send people to Jesus. And because of Pastor Wayne's life and my life, he sowed a seed in me 35 years ago. My first mission as a Christian was Jamaica, sending food to Berean Christian Children Home in Montego Bay, Jamaica. And to this still day, I have connections in Jamaica. After I rededicated my life to the Lord, the Lord opened up the doors to me to Jamaican artists and musicians and teachers in this country. I'm in America right here, right now, at home. I can't go into my uh, radio room because it's leaking. So I moved to my regular room to keep the word going. I thank God for giving me the patience. God has to give you the patience to understand schizophrenia. And as Pastor Wayne said, cast it out. I was ready to give it up. The minute I did that, I said, Pastor, he said, you don't have to tell me you you have schizophrenia. And Pastor Wayne worked with me. After I backslid it, 30 years later, I got delivered again, which was the last time. I backslid it. It's about Jesus. I'm not trying to be spiritual. I'm trying to be a Christian to show you how God's mercy and grace helped me so I can help you. That's all I'm trying to do and stay on air to keep teaching the truth. As I cast that thing out, I went home. I said, Lord, I don't want to be schizophrenia no more. 
He said, okay, throw the books away. Every German book of the military that had a German officer, I threw it away. Now, I love the German people, so I'm mature. But that German army, anything had the German army on, I was ready to listen to it. Doom, the, the power of their weaponry. But I didn't see the spiritual side. So schizophrenia preys upon ignorance. See? Because God doesn't create schizophrenia. Now, before I close, listen to this and get ready for tomorrow. Here are the keys to get delivered from schizophrenia. One, you must submit yourself, therefore, to God. Two, you must resist the devil. In Ephesians 4.27, the Bible says, give the devil no place. Then after that, he says, and he will flee from you. When the devil flees from you, your free will has to go to God in order to get free from schizophrenia. Your free will says, draw night to God. It didn't say draw night to T.T. Jakes. It didn't say draw night to Apostle, Dr. Frederick Casey Price, God bless him. It didn't say Andrew J. Scott, Dr. Apostle, submit to Dr. Apostle. No, no, no. And not say none of that. It says, submit, therefore, yourself to God. When you submit yourself to God, then you're able to resist the devil. Ephesians 4.27 says, give the devil no place. Now watch this. And he will flee from you. The minute you do that, as he flees, then you have a choice. In Revelation 22.11, he that wishes to be evil, let him be evil. He that wishes to be righteous, let him be righteous. Still, your free will will draw you to do either two things. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. That's your choice. And that's what I did. Cleanse yourselves and cleanse your hands, you sinners. Second Corinthians 7, 1 says, Having therefore these forms, let us cleanse ourselves from the spirit of the filthiness of the flesh and spirit. You have to cleanse yourself from reading. You are clean through the word. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners. Watch this. Purify your hearts, ye double-minded. So, now we see that double-minded comes from the heart. And you have a double heart, Psalms 12, 2. Your heart became double because your soul has been split by Satan through deception, mistruth, religious schizophrenia, spiritual schizophrenia, criminal schizophrenia, or inheritance schizophrenia. I hope I've been a blessing to you. I love all of you. I really love all of you. I'm not here for numbers. I thank God for Pastor Wayne C. Thompson from Fellowship of Faith Church International. That's my father. I'm a, a disciple of Pastor Wayne Thompson. 404-346-1162. Pastor Nelson Dean, God bless him. All the people he has over there, God bless him. But me and Pastor Steve Lee was the closest. I'm glad that I met this man named Wayne Thompson at Eastern Airlines after I got out of the military. I got a job as a mail distributioner, dropping off mail at the reservation. A Jewish man led me to Christ and sent me to Wayne Thompson. God bless Pastor Wayne C. Thompson from Fellowship of Faith. I don't lift him up. I lift Christ up, but he gave me revelation through schizophrenia, and I thank God for the Honorable Dr. Derek Prince, who I sit under, who I admire. I don't know these new preachers, but I know Derek Prince. Grateful for a 63-year-old man to go through all of that, shortcut my life. But God can restore your youth and make you youthful. I'm 63 and can go five miles a day. I'm very hyper. God can restore your youth. God can restore your schizophrenia. If you got schizophrenia, if you're struggling from it, it's okay. Get this information. Do what I did. Study. Fast. And let him reveal to you. There's no price for any of you want to get any deliverance from schizophrenia. 
I don't charge nobody. Beginning January 1st, 2025, I'm open to do deliverance. I used to have a staff of 23 people. I don't have it no more. People travel. They're still with me. They have a job. I do everything by myself. My timing normally is okay, and I'll be on time as pointed, but because of the technical problems that I had through my Sam Broadcaster, <laughs> which brought my head that I have, and that was 15 years ago, and I had to had the Holy Spirit to really help me gather it, and I'm grateful that I'm on air now, and I thank the Lord for Brother Tommy. I have a brother from Finnish. I have a Finnish brother, Apostle Tommy. He's my best friend. Did you know that this white man healed me through racism? Because the white American Christians, they didn't heal me. They made it worse for me. God sent me a white man from England named Derek Prince, the last modern-day apostle. Teach me the word, and God sent me Apostle Tommy, a white man who loved me for me, never looked down on me. And I love him to death. A wonderful teacher, a deliverance minister who's been persecuted, even in his own country, like I'm persecuted in my country. There are good people everywhere, all over this world, and there are bad people. I thank the Lord from this brother named Brother Tommy. He's my brother. He's my brother in the Lord. He's my white brother in the Lord, and he teaches out of Finland, and I love him so much. I don't love him because he gave me money. I love him because we have a lot in common. And God used that man to heal me from racism. I got healed from racism because of Brother Tommy. I got healed from racism because of t Row. I got healed from racism because of his mama. I call her mama. They loved me. I've never had people to love me the way that they love me. But you American white people, you need to let Tommy and people in Finland help you because America is very, very wicked with this racism. Please get free from schizophrenia. Get free from hate. Stop voting for people that's going to hurt another person, another race of people. I love you. I love Derek Prince. I love Israel. I love Israel. I love Israel. I love Finland. I love Jamaica. And I love the United States. Hope that I've been a blessing to you. We're going to pick back up on the next segment. We'll be dealing with the double tongue. we got other things of the wavering. And we're going to go deep with this book, Pigs in the Bottle. Now, I ask that you pray for me. I'm calling out for help right now. If you're in the Ministry of Helps, I need your prayers. I need your prayers. I've been fasting. I'm dropping weight. I'm dropping so much weight because I'm just fasting and fasting. These come out by fasting and prayer. My radio station in my home, I got a hole in the wall. I'm not asking you to feel sorry for me because the Lord's going to bless me with my disability for my injuries in the military, and I'm 63 years old, and it happened in 1986. He's a good God. And when I get my money, and you hear me teach, you probably never ask me say, send any money. When I get my back pay and get my house straight where I can teach, I doubt if I ask you guys anything. I, I'm going to set up a new fund. When I get my money from the military and my back pay to be independent, I'm going to set up a fund for people and people who tithe and send to me. I'm going to set aside money for them to help them in time of need. If you're going to be a member here, when I settle my case, when I can have my own funds, I will set up funds to help people who help me. Okay? If you are supporting this ministry, when I settle my case, things are going to change. And I know you have sown a seed four months or more, and you're here. And if you need any assistance, even over of the amount that you need, I will have the funds there to help you. That's how it works. Will a man rob God? Yes, he should rob you in tithes and offering. The Bible says that when you send money to the storehouse, the people who's responsible for the money that you send to should help you out. Churches don't do that. I did it when I had a little small church. I'm going to do it again when I get my radio station. 
if any of you tithe and help this ministry, once I get my situation settled, I'll have two or three tithes. I don't have a lot of people. I'm going to set up funds to help people get this gospel out, get free from these spirits, understand Jesus, not let pastors be your Jesus, but let Jesus be your Jesus through his word and the Holy Ghost and understanding his Sabbath. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord bless Israel. Some of you may not agree with me. I am pro-Israel. I am anti-Trump. I am anti-racism. May the Lord Jesus of Nazareth bless you, believe of you. Please go vote. Please go vote and pray for our nation. Come up against this man. We don't want a nation that's going to put Project 2025 and bring hate and division. We have tired. We got to change the page. America is better than that. I'm an American. I love my country. Even though I know a lot of history about the things that has done opposite of my country, I'm still an American. Please sow a seed to help me. I'm not a beggar. I'm not one that's trying to tell you to send me a sacrificial offering. If the Lord move on you, people, anybody to send a blessing, I'll definitely take it because I've spent a lot of money with my technical problems that I have. We don't get a lot of people, but I do bring the word to you, and I'm very real with you. That I hope that will touch your heart to help me in this endeavor with finances. It costs running a radio station. I don't deal with Shannon Davis no more. Shannon Davis is into Republican, and he said he's going to take his money from uh, Omega Man Radio and all his resources going to support Donald Trump. None of my resources is going to nobody but Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I pray that my testimony has helped you, has enlightened you about schizophrenia, and I gave you my testimony from my personal life that you can get delivered from that. And I will carry you through this journey in Scripture to get free. We need two things from you. I need your prayers first. The money, no, 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 no. I need the prayers. I'm under you. Hunger's attack. I only get three to four hours of sleep at 63. I'm not going to stop. I will continue to teach until I die. I have been under attack with these my radio station, the technical part. Satan is a lie. I don't fear him. Continue to teach the word. I will lift up. And as a matter of fact, when I get off, the man that I my most will be on, Derek Prince. I love that British man. I love that British white man. I love Derek Prince. Come join me tonight with Derek Prince. Come join me in your prayers. I need prayer. See, prayer brings everything. Even in uh, Daniel, when the prince of Persia tried to hinder that man's prayer for 21 days, he had to fight. I'm going through that. Listen to me. I need your prayers. I need your financial support. I only got one person to support me, Brother Samuel Osley. One. And I love him to death. And the reason why I teach at 1130 is to help him because he helps me. Don't have any money, I'll still teach you. If you want deliverance here, you don't have to pay for no deliverance. I don't want, I'll help you. I'll labor, but you're going to have to read the Bible and do it yourself. I'm not a man that believes in taking people's money. I don't like cars and Mercedes. I got a 2004 Taurus. I've already rebuilt the engine myself and one of my Navy comrades and my transmission. Just as happy. I have died to materialistic things. All I want to do is to keep this thing on air. I take my own personal disability money to pay the bills because it gets short. But the Lord told me my, my, my day coming, my settlement that I formed and filed 10 years ago about to come to pass. And when you see a different dynamic website, when you see it more professional, when you see Jermaine Edwards and people on my Internet that I'm interviewing with all over the world, bringing the gospel, listening about deliverances and exorcisms, listening about teachings, and continue to lift up Dr. Derek Prince, the last man who has known to raise three people from the dead, that comes from my money. Because if I had my money, I wouldn't ask anybody. For that. I don't like to ask nobody for that. I don't like to ask even Christians. That's just me. You know, when I was a gangster, I didn't want to be a Christian because I saw pastors pimping people. 
I earned my money because I sold ounces to drug dealers. I've been in shootouts, but I've never been a drug dealer that sold money to a woman for their child, having sex. I've never done that. I dealt with dealers, but I was still wrong, and God forgave me. I can't be a minister to preach the gospel, to teach people and steal their money. That's not in my heart. Too much is given, much is required. He that teaches should be judged. There's nowhere in the Bible that the Bible says steal people's money. Please give whatever you give. We do need help. We need help bad. But I want to do it the right way. If God has put and passion for you to give, please go to www.livedeliverance.com on the lower left hand of the icon. I want to thank Brother Sammy Osley, who sold the seeds for me to keep me on air. I was about to... Didn't even have the money to pay the bills because I've been paying for repairs for this technical stuff. God bless Brother Samuel. He's my only brother. God bless Brother Tommy, who's helped me in Finland. He teaches out of Finland. I'm grateful. I'm I'm not about being big. I'm about teaching Jesus, lifting up his name, lifting up the deliverance ministry, and having a personal relationship with God. I'm not the one to get up here and be flamboyant. You'll never see me in a suit and tie. I died to that. You'll never see gold rings. I was a drug dealer. I don't. That don't mean nothing to me. I still love my 2020, uh, 2001 Ford Taurus. I don't want no new car. I just want my settlement so I can pay bills and increase this radio station and live a better life. I eat MRE rations to survive to stay on radio. But guess what? God got me. My day coming. God bless you. Don't forget tomorrow, 11th, we're going to open back up more on schizophrenia. I hope that this has been a blessing to you. If you'd like to sow a seed to this ministry, please go to www.livedeliverance.com, www.livedeliverance.com. On the lower left hand of the icon, we have a PayPal. We're about to switch up sermons. We're about to go to Dr. Derek Prince, the last modern-day apostle, who have raised three people from the dead. Derek Prince teaching us tonight in the next 30 minutes. Don't forget tomorrow, schizophrenia. I gave you a testimony of my life. I pray this has been a blessing to you. Sow a seed. You can sow two weed, two ways. www.livedeliverance.com. Go fund me. www.livedeliverance.com. On the lower left-hand icon of the PayPal, whatever you sow. We will be grateful. God bless you. Shalom, and God bless all of you. Have a good evening and good night. Got that.